Hello, everyone. This is Jimmy Cultist, back again with a exploration game tutorial. How to create, that is. Today, we're going to be covering the subject of dowsing, which is basically uh, a particular item or stance that you have to be in to detect an item, and how to make items appear under certain circumstances while not in others. I guess you could call it a state, maybe? I'm not really sure what you'd title that in game design. But we have a handy magnifying glass, as reminiscent of Sammy Seal and the uh, many others, Sherlock Holmes, uh, Pig Detective, you know, all those people, the greats, I suppose. But we're going to go ahead and uh, get it ready for use, similar to the crowbar. I'm going to show you a little bit of a, a little bit of a tip for creating glass. At least when you're making, when you're making a uh, magnifying glass, that is. Just go ahead and lower the opacity on this text. Make it white. You'll go for standard on the texture mode. And turn the fade amount pretty high. Texture scale, texture strength, really low. You don't want any texture strength whatsoever. Might turn down the fade just a little bit. Then set it to in scene. We're going to use precise move. And of course, it being glass, you'll want to center it properly. Now we're just going to go ahead and lower the opacity just a tiny bit. Gonna copy this out, shrink one down, and there, you've got a nice illusion of glass. Now there may be some issues with this that I'm not aware of, because I rarely use this feature, but I thought I'd show it to you just in case. On a side note, while we're creating this uh, wonderful, you know, this wonderful experience. Now, to cover the crowbar real quick, something you want to keep in mind whenever designing a game is which item is going to be in primary use. Now, if you want to be able to douse and have an item equipped, you're going to want the magnifying glass in a different hand from the one that holds all the other auxiliary items, because the magnifying glass is essentially your, your dowsing rod. It's your method of discovering clues, items, or hidden things. And it doesn't have to be a magnifying glass. It could be a, a sword, like in Shadow of the Colossus. It could be uh, just about anything, a pair of spectacles, you know, which would solve the problem of having one hand empty, of course. But whatever you choose, we're just going to go ahead and assume that it's going to be held in the character's hand like thus. And of course, like all items, you're going to want it to not be uh, collidable or visible until we have it equipped. So how do we equip the magnifying glass, you may ask? Well, I'm going to show you. If we just can uh, find the pig's logic. Where is the pig? Oh, there it is. All right, pig logic. Now this is going to operate very similar to the crowbar in many regards, with only one minor difference, I would say. Instead of crowbar, we're going to be changing the tag to, what would be a good one? Maybe dowsing? Dows. 
Housing is a weird word, I'm not gonna lie. Alternatively, we could use a zone. I'm not entirely in opposition to a zone. I can't think of the drawbacks right now. There probably are some. Let's go ahead and use a tag. I'm more used to that for Sammy Seal. Now, we we'll want to set it a little bit in front of him. It's possible that you could basically... Uh, you could basically have it so that if the magnifying glass is out, all clues can be accessed just so long as you're near them. Or you could just have it so that when you're in proximity to a clue, you can access it. Depends on how you'd like to uh, go about that. So, like, say there's a... Let's just get a clue real quick here. This thing can basically operate as a clue. Put it down here. Pull this over. Basically the same thing as a clue. Also, let's go ahead and move our little glowy effect over there. We'll, it won't get in the way. But for all intensive purposes, this is a clue. We're going to go ahead and put it in a little microchip, and you'll understand why in a bit. Just double click on everything and move it all in here. Into the microchip. Now let's go back, take a look at our thing. We're going to want it so that when the magnifying glass is equipped, it is visible. So let's scope in twice. Turn on visibility with this keyframe. If you want to know how to activate a keyframe, L1 and X to edit. Of course, you can kind of see a lot of the actions displayed by the imp which is a bit helpful, but I like to remind people just in case. And you should always label things so that you remember what they do, and we're going to label this visible. Of course, we seem to be having so sleepy, an issue with the text box. This can be easily solved. Now you're wondering, well... Are we going to have to create two new wires just to turn off a little text box or two? Because wires cost thermo. And no, all you got to do is turn off the power. Because the magnifying glass, it really doesn't require the power to be on. There's no variables active within that set of, you know, that group or that microchip. So it's fine to just turn off the power and then turn it on again with the keyframe. Be sure to click it off before you use the keyframe because you want its base stance I'm so to be sleepy, off. I can hardly keep my eye. Now we're gonna need a button. I sort of flossed over that. We're gonna need a button to act as our dowsing button and I'm gonna go with R1 just because it's convenient. I also want a little pose to reflect the fact that our fellow is searching for something. By the way, I might size this down. In Sammy Seal, the magnifying glass is quite ludicrously large, but that's because Sammy Seal is just a tiny bit absurd, as some players may have observed. We're going to go ahead and pull up this magnifying glass. We might as well also um, adjust the fingers to make it look like he's actually holding it.
And I'm gonna turn it on real quick. Press the power button. Because I would like to modify the position of our little magnifying glass. Something that's more snug, you know. I do think the pose was pretty good in Sammy Seal. Who's really sort of leaning forward makes it really obvious to the player that you're sleuthing. Although he did lean very low down to the ground, again for absurdity's sake. Sleepy, I can now what do we have here? There seems to be some sort of issue. Now what did we forget? It's off. The visibility must be on, that's what we've made a mistake about. Always so remember sleepy, to have the invisibility help. on. Now of course this is kind of awkward, I mean him running around like this with his magnifying glass out, it's not really something that you do. So we're gonna go to uh, this keyframe which controls the pose. Alternatively you could uh, do this another way and have a separate keyframe that controls his parameters, but all we're going to do is just basically lower it so that he can only walk, which should limit I'm the so flailing and such. Hug. Yeah, that's a little bit more natural. Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. It basically works almost exactly the same as the crow bar. The one minor variation is that basically, you know, we're, we're scanning for a clue. I'm going to make a little bit of an adjustment. See, what is the detection method? I think it's Dow's. Go ahead, pull this up. Sounds like someone's having some sort of altercation. Eh, well, you know, even in a cult, people have tendencies to disagree. I don't know if that's coming through or not. But this should work. Just take a zone, set it to DAOs, set it to cube. This will basically control, you know, what distance you can see the note displayed. Actually though, on second thought, we might just want to leave those other options in. Well, no, wait a minute. You don't want to do that because that'll cause other issues. Oh. I think we might want to pair this with I'm another so video because eventually I eyes. intend to get into the subject of pop-up balloons. But we're going to need a little symbol. Something to indicate, you know, that there's, um, there's a clue nearby. So we're going to go in here and go UI search. And there we have it. Set it to end scene, just as we did before. And you can set it to uh, always on top and always facing camera. 
turn down the text opacity. That should do nicely. I'd create a little microchip to hold this. I think what we'll do, we could have it so that when you get close, or we could just have it in the scene. I'll give you an example of what it'd be like if it was in scene. Set to in scene. I'm so sleepy, I can hardly keep my eyes open. So no matter where you are, you'll see the clue displayed, which might be I'm helpful so sleepy, if you want to make a more easygoing game, you know, for more casual players. But alternatively, if you don't want in scene, you could just set it to cube and have it so that you need to be kind of near the clue to get a displayed, you know, option. Now, the way I did it in Sammy Seals, I had a timer so that um, when you're within a certain range of the clue, It counts down. I'll give you an example of this. Set a detect friend and nothing else. Then just put it in the microchip. Then we just have a handy dandy little timer. So the longer we're within this zone, the more the timer ticks down. You could also set it to positional. That way, if you're not present, it'll go back down, you know, to zero and reset. You can also, similar to how I did it in Sammy Seal, have an indicator of how close the timer is to ticking down. So just enlarge that. You can even change the color if you want to. Make it bright. That would certainly be noticeable. Although I did make the mistake of not keying this in. It should have been in the keyframe. But we've corrected that, so... It's set to sustain, that's good. Now we're going to put the timer output into the playhead, or at least we would. If we could find the playhead, there it is. Just stick that there in the playhead. And when this timer ticks, it'll go to the very end of this. And alternatively, you could just pull this back a bit so that when the playhead reaches the very end, it will also shut off the display. I'm so sorry. I can hardly keep now my eyes open. It. That's a very slow timer. You want something more snappy. People are impatient. So let's go for one. It's probably a lot better. I'm so sleepy I can hardly keep my now, eyes open. Now, of course, open. this note, we've already, you know, done this before in a separate room. But if you wanted to, you could have it so that you have to be in dowsing mode to read notes. But that's a real quick simple way to douse for clues. It doesn't have to be a note. It could be anything. It could even be uh, unlocking the safe. It could be detecting, you know, a clue like a footprint. It could be almost anything. It'd be set up in a very similar way to how we set up the note, of course, where you have a camera focusing in on a key item or a key function. But that's pretty much, you know, that's how you put it together. That's how you douse for clues and items. Hopefully you find that helpful in constructing any kind of exploratory games you may be making at the moment. And uh, we're going to give a quick shout out before we end the video to our monthly supporters on coffee. There they go. Wonderful people. I keep us um, gainfully employed, I suppose you might say. But that's all for now. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss another video. If you wish to support our earnest insanity, you can check the links in the description to donate or buy merch. Until next time, goodbye.